we're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started all right, guys, this is Ranger Rob, and I have Mike Myers, which is a good friend of mine from the Radio Hope Show. And uh, I just discovered, and I don't know where and I've been, but I just found out you just told me you have COVID. Well, yeah, I didn't want people to know. It's kind of like when it, the last time I had VD, I really didn't want it to get out. So how long have you had it? What, COVID or... <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I think I, I first officially noticed symptoms on uh, last Friday. Wow. And uh, you said you're, you, you licked the uh, doorknob or what, what did we do to get this? I, um, I don't know. You don't know? You, how, how do you, I, 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 don't, how, I don't know how I got it. Well, have, have you been out and about? Yeah. <laughs> have you been wearing a have you been wearing a mask avidly? How? Have you been wearing a mask? Not necessarily. When you go to stores you do, don't you? Not if I don't not if I'm not required. Oh. <laughs> I have a completely different take. Not not on wearing the mask to protect <laughs> other people. I guess it's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I, I th this stuff is nothing to be jacked with. It's not. Um, I, I've been very. I was very skeptical about and, COVID. And how do you feel about it now? Uh, I'm grateful that I don't have um, any kind of serious under underlying pre-existing conditions. Mm. Um, other than my mental illness, <laughs> which is <laughs> we all have, <laughs> from what I understand from you, it's not that underlying. No. Someone today said something about me being a window licker, and they said if I wore my, <laughs> if I wore my <laughs> helmet. <laughs> if you wore your helmet a little more often, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought that was funny. So, anyway. so what what have we learned here? What have we learned? Well, I have learned that if you have any inkling that you might have, I, I now call it the vid, the vid, yeah. um, or the Rona, or whatever. Uh, get get. You know, it's probably a good idea to get tested and then stay home. So well, when you got your test, did they do that swab thing up your nose? Yeah, but it was the rapid test. I mean, the the gal came in and she walked out of the she walked out of the room, shut the door, and within about fifteen twenty seconds, all I could hear was, "Yep, he's positive." <laughs> and I Jeez. started and I started laughing <laughs> because I think one of the reasons why is I didn't feel that bad at the time. Yeah. Um, and, and I had the test on Monday. So, um, so, so today started. is Friday. So I, 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 depending on when people see the show, I got to kind of give people an idea what the time is. So you've known for about f five days, seven, seven days. Gotcha. And well, well, no, you're right. Actually, five days from that I actually have it, but the symptoms started up uh, on Friday, last gotcha. Friday. And um, you said you can't taste anything. <laughs> is it real? Is that true or smell? Is it smell or taste? I think I still smell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so does I, your... I can't smell or taste anything. I'm really? just, it's just starting to come back. If I, if I sniff, <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, you know, if you grab a Ranger Rob poopy bag, you can get a big, a big scent of really good lemon. I probably need to order another box because mine, they're old. The lemon you, scent is kind of... You, you huffed them all, huh? Yeah. 
So how uh, this um when you got after you got checked, how soon did it take for you to start losing your smell and taste? Well, that's the interesting thing uh, about it because it was on Monday that I went in. I contacted my boss. I work for the Boone Community Schools, and uh, told him I said I don't think I should. Pro- I think I might have the the Rona. And to make a long story short, at that point, uh, I couldn't taste anything. I couldn't smell anything. So when they were the gals were asking the questions, the nurse the nurses were asking the questions. The first gal that came in. When I told her that I can't, I can't taste or smell anything, she said, "You don't need to be driving anywhere, except sure. home. You yeah. just need to go home." So, so uh, that's a definite giveaway. What's it like not to be able to smell or taste anything? That must be weird. I've never, I can't imagine that. I've lost about four pounds. Wow. Um, I it, I eat just because I know it's something I should probably do. But it's kind of more of an exercise. Huh. So what? What do, you, what do you what do you think made you lose weight? Just eating less? Yeah, it just doesn't stuff doesn't have any taste. I mean, why waste a bowl of ice cream if you can't taste it? I mean, you can tell it's sweet. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. Salty. Now I did. I will tell you. I need to let you know this. This is a very important. Uh, an item I found out: tonic water with quinine. With qu- qu- quinine. Qu- quinine. Quinine. Yeah. Qu- you know that stuff they say that hydroxychloroquine, quinine. <laughs> yeah. Hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> Release the kraken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, so my wife bought me two four packs, and. Uh, uh, and I, I asked my daughter, who's a doctor, if if um, that does any good to drink that. And she said, well, <laughs> she said, if you have restless leg syndrome, it can help relieve it. I thought she said something about resting on eggs somewhere. I didn't know what she'd said. But anyway, you know, it doesn't help. And it tastes, it, it doesn't really have a flavor. Yeah, but I did end up giving a little bit to my wife before she started losing her sense of smell and taste. And she, you know, when they give a little kid something they don't like, they go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so your wife got it too, huh? She has it. She tested. She got her test back yesterday. And she's positive. And how's she handling it? Uh, she's got nasty sniffles. And have you had sinus issues at all? Uh, not really. I feel stuffed up. I think the worst part has been the headache, aches, headache and aches, fever. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are you achy like like you have the flu? Yes. <clears throat> That's the other thing I noticed on. I hate that feeling. And it, it the good thing was I. It, Friday night, I realized something was going on. We had the granddaughter, little Melody, over, and I knew right then I, I just needed to start staying away. So uh, I, I spent, wow, Friday, wow, Friday evening? It's pretty much Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, uh, in bed. Monday, I didn't feel too bad. In fact, I thought I'd be able to drive. And, uh, and then Monday night, yuck. Tuesday, Tuesday sucked. Wednesday sucked. And what was going on during those days? Fever, ache, pounding headache, <laughs> couldn't get what, comfortable. What kind of temperatures were you having? Uh, anywhere from 99.5 seemed to be the, 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 the basic one. I got up to yeah. 102, and then I got a little nervous, and um, and my wife suggested I call the doctor's office, which I did. I just said, I don't want to go to the hospital. And they said, until you hit 104, you, you don't have too much to be concerned about. Yeah. So um, 
I was uh, relieved when I found that out. I was like, oh, thank you. That's good news. Did you, um, so during the process, what's some of the things that made you feel better during the process? Uh, my 1964 play, no, um, nothing. I really felt, well, ibuprofen and, oh, we drink lots and lots and lots of liquids. And you said you were taking ibuprofen and something simultaneously or every four hours? Yeah, I, I every four hours you can, t I didn't realize, that, I thought you, I thought when it came to Tylenol and and and, and what you call your uh, ibuprofen, I didn't realize you could you could alternate it every four hours, and yeah, still and take it, a full. You can take a full dose. Well, who told? As, who did the doctor suggest that? Well, kind of, but yeah, they did. But I don't know that they said every four hours. I I had it stuck in my head that it was every six hours. Yeah. Um, because you can take up to, uh, let's see, 8 to 16, about 3,200 milligrams of ibuprofen a day max. And you can take up to, I think it's a, I don't know what it is on Tylenol. But, but anyway, it, it's, here, okay, here's the deal. Let me tell you how this works. Official documentation. Michael Myers was seen and treated at the walk in clinic on 1123, blah, 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 for COVID 19. At 1125, te te tested positive. Positive. May return to work or school per current IDPH guidelines. 24 hours fever free without the use of fever reducing medications. Improvement in symptoms, and it has been at least 10 days since the start of symptoms. Wow, you're getting close to your ten days already. Well, and I and I've been thinking, huh? I probably, I mean, I could go back. I could go back and drive on Monday, but the school gives you an automatic uh, ten days off. Mm. And uh, my wife, uh, she's such a great lady. Last night she said, "You do realize that you, you've got, you have fourteen days total." I mean, if you include the weekend. Yeah. So it, I just feel kind of bad because somebody else has to cover for me. But, you know, to, and here's the other thing, Rob. I would I would feel terrible if I got somebody else sick. Yeah. And this didn't really hit me until I had it. And then I could give it to somebody else. And the wife's got it. Did I give it to her? Most likely, <laughs> but the, I think if I got it too, I'd end up giving it to Sherry, so sh or vice versa. And then uh, when I was had my uh, my my daughter on this morning on the on the podcast, she had uh, she had recommended that we need to isolate, <laughs> Mister Quarantine. Yeah, so I uh, I actually ended up today. I I took some chlorine wipes and. Wipe down doorknobs and said they were gross. <laughs> When's the last time you wiped down your doorknobs? <laughs> I don't know. Sherry, Sherry kind of takes care of that the most around here, and she probably does because she's very um, attentive to that kind of stuff. And then I just remember too, I I did throw away the the plastic, the clear plastic cup in the bathroom upstairs, and I I asked, I asked Laura. I said, so have you been using the same cup that I've been using? <laughs> yeah. She goes, yeah, right after I used your, your toothbrush, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a whole other story. That's yeah. funny. Not the tight budget, you know? <laughs> well, that's a, I found out that we had two, two hanging on inside the medicine cabinet door down here, downstairs. And I, I thought I was always grabbing the right one. Turns out we were using the, We've been using the same toothbrush for a while. <laughs> Golly. Yeah. We need to communicate more. Yeah, you get you get a routine and it's like <laughs> the wife goes, you know, I changed those. You did. <laughs> I think she said it's the far back one. I'm pretty sure I've been using the front one. Yeah, you can have to color code them or something. 
Or I could put I got a black magic marker. There you go. Put Michael on it. BMM. Yeah. Black magic marker. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, uh, you've been doing shows all week, even with the COVID, huh? Well, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Rob, because I I feel I feel pretty good in the morning. Oh, and then the other night, oh wow, I ended up just sweating like a how do people know that stuck pigs sweat? Anyway, um, and had some strange dreams. Really? Yeah. In fact, I've had, I think I've had four so far. So what's a strange dream? Um, well, one of the dreams was that I was in this kind of this underground, like big sewer pipe. No, not a sewer pipe. Just a, where a bunch of rat people lived. <laughs> okay. And I had my really nice set of Sennheiser cream colored headphones uh, with me. And for some reason, one of the brand new pads fell off <laughs> into this kind of on top of this table that was kind of wet and gushy. And, and then I noticed somebody that was kind of looked like a rat person was <laughs> they were eyeing my headphones. And then I woke up and went pee. And then I came back to bed and then I dreamt that I was in this big city somewhere and I was staying at this big hotel. <laughs> it's some weird stories. And I ended up leaving the hotel and, and, and when it was time to go home, I had no, I, I, no, no, I clue, no idea what the name of the hotel was because I had forgotten, but then I opened my wallet and found the receipt. So I, and then I went pee again. <laughs> <laughs> It's hard to get a full dream in when you got to pee so much, huh? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's that's funny. That's there's a there's a book. It's hard to get a it's hard to get a full dream in when you got to pee so much. That so, many, sell. Did, so did you actually do a show every day of the week while you're yeah. sick? Yes. And I oh, I it couldn't felt. use your last show because you decided to talk too long. Your last show, uh, you had a one-minute show on there and a forty-minute show. <laughs> I mean, uh, oh, that we had tech, te technical difficulty. Yeah, so I, I had to skip that one, but I got today's. So, do you need an extra? No, I just play a rerun. So, if people didn't know, uh, Mike uh, Mike's show is on Good Talk Radio in the evenings now, uh, or early evenings. And uh, so he does a you do a podcast show every single day. And when I say every single day, seven days a week, you do a show. And I love it. Yeah. And it's it's like, very therapeutic. Oh, you, guess what I used for intro music this morning? I have no idea. I didn't get to listen today. Break the Fever by <laughs> Matt. But you ever told anybody in your show you have it, do you? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did this morning. It was really neat getting to, and, and I used uh, 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 Zoom, so I got to have this face-to-face -face conversation with my lovely daughter. Yes. She's a neat lady. Boy, am I proud of that young girl. She live in the same state or nearby? She, I live in a state of confusion. She, <laughs> she lives in Mississippi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Just... Uh, so does she like to be on the podcast, or is she a little sh on the shy side? No, no. It was kind of cool though. At one point, she said, "She said before I I did some uh, some uh, research before I I got on the call today, and I thought that sounds really professional." Before I got on the call today, <laughs> don't you hate it when our daughters do that? Because <laughs> I have Tracy, and she said he said and she's always. So business like all the time is like, dang girl, <laughs> where'd you get that from? You know what? She did make some. She said a couple of things that just to me were just amazing. She said, if you ever meet a doctor who thinks he knows everything, run, and that a lot of them have mental illness. So, what profession is she in? She's a medical doctor. She's oh, a she. Gotcha. she and she practiced on the front lines for a number of years 
And uh, now she actually works for a, a very, 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 very large insurance company. Mm. So she's kind of the doctor liaison between <clears throat> the hospitals, patients, and lawyers and doctors. She's got a really, wow, there's no way. And then she also had told me that, oh, here's a story for you, Rod. This will get you. Wow. So there was um, a young girl. I think she said she was like, I don't know, eight or 11, one of the two. And this little girl uh, had COVID, but didn't know she had COVID. And she went and, and no symptoms whatsoever. And she went and visited her grandma and grandpa. Oh, no. Yeah. Grandpa died from COVID. Really? Yeah, she, that's a heart wrencher. Did, did the little one know that? Yeah. Hmm. And I was like, we uh, we had Sherry's mom over. You know, she's in a, uh, assisted living. And so we're, Jay Lynn's down here, her sister. And she's been very, very avid about following procedures. And she's from Washington. Mm -hmm. So um, she's been really careful for especially the last few weeks, knowing that she was going to come down here. And then um, we had her mom over. And uh, so, uh, man, we were so precautionary in the whole thing. Everything's gone well. and uh, But we're scared to death that he's like, oh, one of us gave that to her, mm -hmm. her mother, that, you know, because she's 83 now and she's pretty frail. Well, I'm just glad that uh, I didn't get so upset with the nursing home. Oh, it wouldn't make any difference just because I got ticked off didn't mean they'd let me in. But my mom's 91. And the last thing that, you know, it, it, it would have just, yeah. I just have a totally different um, perspective of this whole thing. And I, I, I would just encourage people, it, it just, it just be careful and care something else. I don't know. Caring and careful. That's how I worded it. Yeah. So um, from last week to this week, what are some what are some of your lessons learned? Don't assume. Assume what? Don't assume that you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a lot of people have it and don't even know they have it. Kind of like MRSA. It's like my, my daughter said, it, it lives up in here. Sinuses? Yeah. And and I'm a MRSA carrier also. And MRSA, I'm not sure what that is. Methacethylacillin. I could ask my, you know who, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a resistant streptus. I don't, it's something that is, you do not going to get it. Although it runs rampant in hospitals. Gotcha. Which is another good reason to take well enough care of yourself that you don't end up in a hospital. So here's a question I'm sure a lot of people say is, how did you feel about masks last week and how do you feel about masks this week? That's a great question. Um, I know that when I'm around other people, although I've been told now for about probably three months, the possibility of me giving it to somebody else it still exists. Don't let anybody tell you. Well, in fact, somebody said, well, now that you've had it, now you can go see your mom in the nursing home. No, I can't. Gee, everybody thinks they're a freaking doctor. So to answer your question, I know, I know, like when I drive the van, I will be masking up. Were you before? Yes, but not as, not as well as I could have. I didn't take it seriously. Yeah. And, and, and you're yeah. saying probably the same thing I would have done is I uh, I do follow the rules and all that stuff. But, you know, there's times where I kind of like uh, I'm in the Home Depot and it's like I can't breathe through this thing. And I'll pull it halfway down just to breathe better. And, uh, and then when nobody's around and then when somebody's coming by, I bring it back up, you know. But uh, I found myself cheating and, and stuff like that. And now that this is probably the closest I've been to anybody that's actually 
got COVID. I've actually not known anybody who's gotten COVID before. And that's why it's really interesting to have you on the show today. And uh, so this kind of brings it home a little. And so it's it, good. It, yeah, it, it brings it home. Oh, my gosh. And then there was another. Um, well, the other thing I would say, too, is uh, I will definitely be practicing safe sex. No, I was keeping away. <laughs> keeping away from people, keeping a distance. There's no sense yeah. in, you know, I, before it was like, no big deal. I'd go up, shake their hand. If I saw them, you know, at, in Menards and hey, it's no, you know, I, I ain't going to get the COVID because I ain't going to get the you. COVID. And, I, I, and so, so it's been, actually, it's been really good, but, and it's also been a wake up call to the fact that it's so easy to, just take life for granted and take your loved ones for granted. Again, knowing that I got it, there is no way that I I would oh I would feel terrible if somebody else got sick for me. Oh yeah. I mean, just absolutely horrid. And that's what people have been saying for a long time. And I've been one of those. Like I said, I've just been I've been a skeptic. And I talked to I talked to a. a a gal today who said, I'm still a skeptic. And I'm like, huh, okay, which is fine. I just know that it's, it's made a real, uh, it's made a real believer out of me, yeah. you know, and whether it's this or just a nasty cold, um, just think about other people. Yeah. And it Other seems like it's focus. harder and harder to get people to be to use empathy anymore. Uh, it's just well, people don't, it's kind of sad, but there's so many people that don't feel other people's feelings, or everybody's so me, me, me that I don't know how we're going to control this thing with that kind of attitude. Well, uh, yeah, and then somebody sent me a, a little picture of a guy holding up a piece of paper that said, "Make me." You know, make me wear a mask. Now, you know what I will do, though? I'll probably just, if you've got that attitude, I'll probably just stay away from you anyway. No, go ahead. Make me. Make my day. <laughs> oh, man. So I think distancing is the best. I think distancing and, and, yeah, and keeping a clean mask. Yeah. Or at least a mask, even if it's not even, you know, how many people just shove one in their freaking pocket and they pull it out and it's got a cough drop stuck to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, just having this conversation, you've kind of like, all right, there's a few things I could do better. And that's why I'm hoping to get out of the show. That's why you and I agreed to like, let's get a show going and talk about this. And uh, what's it say on there? Better so science for a better life. Gotcha. And that That's I will, good. and I pop this, I'll, I'll pop this baby on if I need to go somewhere. I'm not as uh, stubborn when it comes to, you know, put on, just put the thing on. Now I haven't where it hasn't been required, mm -hmm. but where it is, it's like, get over it. it here, I probably get to tell you a story if I got time. Yep. You got five minutes. Okay. So I had gotten into a, of a conversation with uh, somebody I know from Walmart. And I was in there one day and I was all bent out of shape about uh, wearing the mask. And this gal said, she said, look, no shirt, no shoes, no service. I mean, come on, put on your big boy pants and put on a mask. Yeah. And I said, no shirt. Uh, so you're telling me it's the same thing as uh, me wearing a mask or not wearing a mask would be the same thing as you not wearing a shirt. It was a gal. <laughs> I, I guess that kind of to, rings up there. Well, I said that to my daughter this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, it just depends on your perspective. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the other thing I always notice is like, there is people wearing masks, but, but then some of them are wearing them so poorly. Because I'll yeah. see them where I don't have one here, but they'll put like the paper ones on and don't fold the nose or anything. So it's wide open on the sides. It's like, whoa, what's the point <laughs> folks on uh, Mike, uh, especially thank you so much for the interview. And uh, uh, I hope, I hope 
somebody that watches these shows will maybe kind of get rejuvenated. That's it's kind of what we wanted to do on this show. So thanks again, Mike. You're more than welcome. Thank you, Rob. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.